But I wanted to ask you, what was your first step in doing this? And so was it getting to the publisher? Was it getting Naval on board? Was it Tim Ferriss? Was it all of the above? Yeah, interesting. It's a good question because I think the like order of operations is helpful and instructive. And like I found myself getting stuck when I was working on the wrong thing at the wrong time or worried about the wrong thing at the wrong time. And I would like lose energy or momentum or something like that and mm -hmm. and have to kind of figure out what the right next step was. Because like I said, my first book, you know, this is I'm discovering kind of as we go. So the first thing I did was just get this, you know, basically get Naval's approval that or at least vague support of the project, you know, and that happened like on Twitter, the instant I put the idea out, you know, I, I had this kernel of an idea and <laughs> tweeted out it. like, Hey, do you, does anybody want me to write like the book of knowledge? And, and like, even if it was, you know, just to my followers, it was kind of like, yeah, okay. Like maybe it's an idea, maybe it's not, but Naval retweeted it. And so I woke up to find that like 5,000 people were like, oh my God, yes, please give us this. And Naval, wow. it was kind of in tacit support of the idea and like, Hey man, I'm happy to give you any, you know, resources and projects that you need to like get this done and old tweets and whatever else. And I was kind of like, oh, well. That's what I mean of like, I, I fell off the cliff. I was like, well, I got to do this now. You like there's it, no, yeah. you know, I'm publicly committed. I have a unique opportunity and, and you know, Naval has kind of said, go for it. And so I, I can't like, can't turn that down. And I would have had a hard time putting as much energy into it if I didn't know that he was supportive at least, sure. right? Like I, I wouldn't have done it if he did not want, or at least under like be willing to, to go along with that. This felt, you know, more contentious, I guess, than I, that I would have had an appetite for. Sure. Um, but once he was, you know, supportive, I got this full Twitter export of all his his history of tweets, just like 20,000 tweets. And I just started reading, <laughs> combing through and like kind of sorting and categorizing and curating and did a few passes of that and then collected all the other resources. So that's interviews, blog posts, you know, essays, podcasts, anything that I could find, articles written about him, talks that he'd given, interviews. And it was almost a hundred sources all told, I mean, across everything that, uh, wow. that he has shared over the years. And there was a lot of just, you know, pulling out themes and breaking things down and trying to figure out kind of what the right ideas are to couple, what the right themes are, how to organize everything and order them. And so really, I mean, the first two years of work probably was just churning on this manuscript and getting better and better and smoothing and sanding and getting the pieces all in the right place until it read smoothly and quickly. And um, then I went to some peer readers and reviewers and just, you know, sent a, a manuscript to some friends. The first version of the manuscript was huge. It was like 600 pages. It was a little wow. more okay. poor Charlie's Almanac. <laughs> and so there was a lot of hard edits that had to happen there, which the bonus stuff is all up on the website now. So I felt better about that, but they were like painstaking cuts when I had to make them. It's pretty amazing. I mean, like, as I was reading the book, there was a part of me that I was like, there's been a lot of thought put into this. There's be and, and for people who don't have the book yet, but should for sure get it. It's basically, it's almost like there's a tweet, there's a paragraph and there's an, and then there's an example of that tweet, right? So it's like some really great one liner, call it a bumper sticker. And then there's a little bit more around that, like capsulizing the idea. And then there's like the action of that. And that's so well done to me over and over and over in the book. I kept picking up on these themes and I had never, I don't think most people think about putting tweets in a book, but the synthesis of that idea and then how you elaborate on it after super well done. I mean, I was like, this is really good because it hits you with the idea from multiple angles, which I think is important, especially in today's world where we're just so, so fixated on like, oh, moving on, moving on. Yeah. I'm gl really glad to hear you say that because I was it wasn't obvious to me that it would be clear how hard that was to get, to uh, get right. You know, it's kind of like yeah. just standing and standing and standing until it all reads smoothly and all the ideas kind of flow together and the right things are coupled exactly what we are saying of like, here's the example, here's the aphorism, here's the, you know, here's all of the kind of ways to implement it. Um, but you know, all of these ideas are out there, you know, there's, there's nothing in this book that wasn't already public information. Sure. And so the, the, the value from my perspective was really that I had to make them make it a comprehensive, fully kind of explained version of the idea from what was out there and make it feel like a, a new experience, even though, you know, a lot of people reading it had listened to the podcast before, but it's very different to listen to a one hour podcast mm. and go through all of these ideas versus look at like a 10 year body of work and pull out the very best articulation of each idea and group it with its fellow ideas and just be sure you show kind of the fullness of each one of these like kernels. Yeah, it was hard work um, and <laughs> took a lot of it took a lot of passes of just like loading it all into your head and making the little connections and 
you know, just, it, that's why it took three years to, to reach a quality bar that I was happy with. And so once you have the manuscript at that point, you're just shopping it to publishers. Is that your next step or what, like when, when do you get the forward on? Like, when does that happen? Just walk us through sort of the operation there. Yeah, that, that happened very late. And so I think, you know, one, one thing that I kind of learned through this is, you know, when you have proof of work, like people are willing to show up and help. And so mm -hmm. when I had tweeted like, Hey, I think I've got a finished manuscript here and I've been through, you know, three years and hundreds of hours of work and, you know, I've had peer reviewers and I've had everything. Then I tweeted that not entirely sure what my next, I knew I needed to work with a publisher or some combination of professionals to get it designed and proofread and, and, you know, up for sale, but I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. And as soon as I tweeted that Tucker Max replied, it was like, Hey, you've been following this project for a long time. We'd love to help you out at Scribe. Like, let's talk about this. And I was like, oh, perfect. And so Scribe Media is, they basically help authors go from, from manuscript to published finished book, or they help people who don't want to sit and write their own full manuscript. They have a process that they will do interviews and just pull your ideas out of you and help you structure them into a book and publish that book for you with like, a relatively small time investment, which is really, really cool process, but they have incredible designers, incredible copy editors and proofreaders. And it's a really like well-honed process and they publish like dozens of books a year, but it's almost a publisher for self publishing. Yeah, um, and so like, it's not like the, you know, penguin process where they give you a loan and then they get it back. It's like you pay everything up front, you pay for the service, but then you you know, you retain your rights and they're just there to kind of help you get over the finish line. And so that was a really, really helpful kind of set of experts to have, because there's a lot of steps that go into that, that like yeah. self-teaching each one of those is, is tricky, or even going to find the talent and hire each one of those people yourself is tricky. So that was a really kind of key piece of that process. And then just like that lends a level of professionalism. And so the, the forward was a really kind of late piece to fall in. Okay. And it, I think it, happened just because of all of the other proof of work that was there. This is a project, you know, Tim and Naval have been friends for a long time. And this is a free, you know, the book is available for free online. The digital versions are free on, on the website. And so it's, it's a non-traditional arrangement on, on a whole bunch of different fronts. Yeah, that's super amazing. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.